V10 Character Summary Part 2 Legion, Eclipse Dark Legion, 2 years old? Legion has avenged some of their own deaths in their previous lives. Legion's members account for almost all of the deaths that the people of Morxi are aware of other than the deaths of the bandits. The only exception is a traveler, one of the people whose body had been possessed by one of Fitton's heroic spirits, who was slain by a skeleton, Bone Man. In reality, there were no casualties at all. However, the people who were outside the city at the time are unaware of this, including the young adventurers whose lives were saved by a mysterious old woman, Valkyrie. Thanks to them and Earl Isaac Morksy's speech, Legion have acquired the Nameless Heroes title. Even though they had randomly picked the appearances of villagers they had acquired with the encroachment fusion skill to disguise themselves, it didn't change the fact that these were still a part of Legion. To use a human as an analogy, it is perhaps similar to the way that looking at someone from behind or from the side doesn't change the fact that it is the same person. Acquiring a title in this way is only possible for Legion, who is made up of multiple personalities. Legion have heard that a statue of the nameless heroes has been built in the plaza, and although they are fanatical worshippers themselves, they were unable to stay around any longer. At the end of Volume 10, they are sitting in Vandalia's house, with a distant look in their eyes. During the battle against Hajime Fitton, Legion absorbed the flesh and organs of a mountain giant corpse and used the remaining skeleton to fight in the form of a giant, though the idea of doing this came from Kanako's dance lessons, during which she told them, if you can't dance because you have no bones, can't you just stick something inside that will act as bones? Legion have changed the way they think about dancing, and now believe that they need to get used to it. Legion feel even less emotion than Kanako towards the fact that Hajime and the other reincarnated individuals were killed. They seem to think that it was simply a battle between people who knew each other's faces, and that it was just an extension of what happened in Origin, them and Murakami's group making use of each other and then trying to kill each other. In addition to that battle, they contributed in other ways, such as using Jack's teleportation to send monsters approaching the city and heroic spirits who had taken over the bodies of others as vessels into an underground dungeon. The experience points they gained as a result caused their rank to increase, turning them into a rank 12 race called Eclipse Dark Legion, though there is no change to their appearance such as their flesh turning darker. They have also changed jobs to group mass user. Simon, human, 27 years old, male. Vandalia's second disciple. In the past, he had the appearance of a middle-aged man with disheveled hair, stubble on his face and tattered clothes. He shaves and dresses properly these days, and even though his slim build and the fact that he has an artificial right arm from the shoulder down, he now looks like the young man that he is. He is from one of the numerous villages in the Alcrum Duchy, and since his older brother was set to take over the family business, Simon moved to the city of Morxi, the furthest city from the village, dreaming of success as he registered at the Adventurer's Guild. Blessed with considerable talent for the sword, Simon passed examinations and ascended to D-class, but lost his dominant arm from the shoulder down in a battle against monsters soon after. He struggled for a while trying to somehow continue his life as an adventurer, but nothing could be done. But he was also unable to return to his home village or find other work, so he ended up living a miserable life as a resident of the slum quarters, doing day jobs for the Adventurers Guild. A messenger of the starving wolf Michael, the person who had newly taken over the red light district near the slum quarters, called out to him. Bewildered, Simon responded and found himself meeting Vandalieu. Simon heard Darcia's speech and decided that it wasn't too late for him to start over in life. But this did not go so well, and he was on the verge of being killed by a pack of wolves when Vandalieu saved him and took him in as a disciple. He's one of the people whose lives were changed for the better when Vandalieu came to the city of Morxi. As he has spent a long time living in the slums, his tone of speech and behavior seem crude, but he's a good person at his core. Although the fact that he could earn enough to feed himself through his day jobs was also a big factor, his good personality is the reason he didn't stain his hands with crime despite being in the slums. Due to Vandalia's special training, Simon has become able to do things that no other humans can do. 
he can manipulate and materialize his soul form and he has acquired the long-distance control skill. The majority of humans who acquire these abilities while alive also develop problems with their minds, but, perhaps because Vandalyu has conducted the training appropriately, Simon has not acquired mental corruption or anything of the sort. By coincidence, Simon has become acquainted with the alchemist Jesse, who is the daughter of the guild master of the Adventurer's Guild. The curious Jesse questioned Vandalyu and his companions about the artificial limbs that he made, and while answering her questions, Simon became to Jesse something that is more than a friend but not quite a lover. With Vandalyu's special training, his guidance and his divine protection, Simon has both regained and developed to surpass the physical ability he had when he was an active adventurer. In combination with the transforming artificial arm that he was given to celebrate his graduation, his skill in combat is equivalent to those of a C-class adventurer. Without it, he is somewhere between upper D-class and lower C-class. During the battle at the front gate, he used the long-distance control skill to control his artificial arm, awakening the ability to send forth a rocket punch. Since he was seen doing so, he has acquired the Flying Sword and Iron Arm titles. Simon is aware that he does not have the skills that warrant gaining titles, but he is determined to become worthy of them, looking towards the future with the same feeling that he did when he first became an adventurer. Incidentally, during the last chapter of Volume 10, he is aware of the truth about Vandalyu and his companions. He was surprised to hear that Vandalyu killed the god of thunderclouds, but he does not intend to leave Vandalyu's side because of this. When he activates his artificial arm, which is a piece of transformation equipment, the black liquid metal spreads all over his body to supplement the armor he is wearing and support the movements of his body. These functions are very good, but, because of the color, it gives him the appearance of a high-ranking officer or leader of some evil organization. Though it should be obvious, he has not received any dancing or singing lessons, as he has only learned the truth quite recently. Name, Simon. Race, Human. Age, 27 years old. Titles, Flying Sword, New, Iron Arm, New. Job, Transformation Equipment User. Level, Zero. Job History, Apprentice Warrior, Warrior, Swordsman, Spirit Swordsman. Passive Skills. Strengthened Muscular Strength, Level 3, Level Up. Detect Presence, Level 2, Level Up. Starvation, Disease and Poison Resistance, Level 2. Mental Resistance, Level 3, Level Up. Strengthened Attack Power when Equipped with a Sword, Small, New. Self-strengthening, transformation, level 1, new. Active skills. Swordsmanship, level 5, level up. Armor technique, level 3, level up. Surpass limits, level 4, level up. Coordination, level 3, level up. Dismantling, level 2, level up. Housework, level 1. Spirit Form, Level 3, New Materialization, Level 1, New Long Distance Control, Level 1, New Familiar Spirit Demon Fall, Level 1, New Unique Skills Vandalia's Divine Protection, New Natania, Mountain Cat Type Beast Kin, 17 years old, female A Mountain Cat Type Beast Kin Girl she is a beautiful girl who looks strong-willed, with the ears of a cat, a leopard-spotted tail, short amber-colored hair, and thick eyebrows. Her limbs have been severed from about halfway down her upper arm and halfway down her thighs, but she is now equipped with metal artificial limbs. Due to magic, the artificial limbs feel light to Natania, but heavy to everyone else. She was a female adventurer with slightly above-average qualities and was able to work on her own after her registration. But after becoming a D-class adventurer and starting to take on rank 3 and 4 monsters, it became tough to be on her own, so she looked for companions and joined the Flameblades, a group of D-class adventurers like her. While they were escaping from a horde of minotaurs, they used Natania as bait, resulting in her capture and the severing of her limbs. She was on the verge of being sacrificed to an evil god. 
Randolph saved her and although he was supposed to dispose of her, he spared her. By pure coincidence, he left her in the care of Vandalieu and his companions. Like Simon, who has lost an arm, she received training and has become able to move and fight better than she did with her original limbs. She had a rougher personality in the past, causing her to be unable to get along with others, but being captured by the Minotaurs broke her pride countless times, and as she became dependent on Juliana to remain sane, the thorny parts of her personality fell away. Now, she follows Juliana, who has been pseudo-reincarnated as a half-minotaur. I guess it's okay? I mean, Juliana San says it's fine, she tells herself. She resents the flame blades who sacrificed her to save themselves, and was intending to never forgive them if they managed to use someone's help to weasel themselves out of the heavy fine that was imposed on them by the Adventurers Guild. But upon learning that their bodies were stolen from them by heroic spirits, with their personalities erased in the process, she has started to feel that resenting them is meaningless. She feels thankful to Randolph for saving her life, and to Vandalieu for doing the same as well as being a master to her. She considers Simon and the rats to be her friends. She was about as capable as a D-class adventurer when she still had flesh limbs, but having grown under Vandalieu's guidance and divine protection and having received transformation equipment, she is as capable as a C-class adventurer now. Her transforming equipment is her four artificial limbs, which makes them more flexible than Simon's. She can even change the shape of her joints to run like an agile four-legged animal, but since the waist that supports her limbs is still made of flesh and bone, she injured her back during the battle at the front gate and had to rest in bed after the battle. Incidentally, her appearance when she has transformed is that of a suspicious bad person or a high-ranking member of an evil organization. Juliana Alcrum, half Minotaur, zero years old, approximately eight years old in appearance, female. As a human, she was around twenty years old, a beautiful blonde, blue-eyed woman who was both courageous and gentle. Due to her pseudo-reincarnation, although her hair and eyes remain the same color, she is now a girl with the horns and tail of a bull. She is the youngest daughter of the previous Duke Alcrum and younger sister of the current Duke, Tackard Alcrum. She has given up rights to succeed the House of Dukes, but she was originally of such high class that she would be called princess and waited upon by servants. But she was born as a result of the previous duke laying hands on a woman who was not his mistress and only recognized as his child some time after her birth, she was unaccustomed to the lifestyle of the upper class and also of questionable value in an arranged marriage. Thus, it was decided that she would walk the road of a knight. Fortunately, Juliana was talented and showed considerable skill as a knight, eventually coming to lead her own troops. However, she was captured alive when she encountered minotaurs on a mission to exterminate monsters that were attacking a village. Even after her four limbs were severed and the minotaur king turned her into a machine to lay eggs from the demon king's oviduct, her sanity lasted for about a month, but reached its limit before she was rescued by Randolph. After coming to be under Vandalia's care, her sanity returned with his mental encroachment and guidance, or so it may appear, but she has turned into a lunatic. She was always a fervently religious person, but now, Vandalia is on the top of the list of beings that she worships. She has emotions and the ability to reason, but she also has an equally fierce fanatical devotion to him. That devotion has become even more firm through her pseudo-reincarnation into one of the eggs implanted in her body, to the point that Guffedgarn and Legion acknowledge her as a like-minded comrade. Perhaps because of the strong minotaur part in her, or perhaps because an egg from the Demon King's Oviduct was used, Juliana has already grown to have the appearance of an eight-year-old despite only about a month having passed since her pseudo-reincarnation. She is currently leader of the other half-minotaurs, her former female knights and the village girls, who underwent pseudo-reincarnation like her. They were all born from the other eggs that Juliana's previous body gave birth to, so they can all be considered sisters. She considers magical girls to be disciples of Vandalieu, and she is receiving instruction from Kanako and Zadiris to become one herself. However, it seems that she is unable to understand why Zadiris detests being a princess, as she herself possessed the Princess Knight of Alcrum title before her rebirth. 
she is uninterested in Tackard Alcrum, her older half-brother who ordered Randolph to dispose of her. She considers Randolph to have saved her life. She considers Natania to be another person she owes her life to and an irreplaceable friend. If Natania didn't persuade Randolph to spare them, Juliana's life would have ended without her ever meeting Vandalio, and she would have then become a dead spirit or returned to the circle of reincarnation. Chipura's Evil Flash Ghost? Years old, male. Chipura's usually takes on the appearance of the ghost of a faintly glowing, happy, plump, middle-aged man, but before he died, he was Ternicia's fine dog, a vampire who had lived for tens of thousands of years. He is truly loyal to his master, but he was always sly when dealing with others in the past. His personality has become considerably more amicable now, as his current master Vandalyu dislikes internal conflicts and does not demand that his allies kick each other and their subordinates down in an eternal power struggle. Heinz, who had summoned a familiar spirit upon himself, cut Chapuras down with a magic sword imbued with light attribute magic, causing severe damage to Chapuras' soul. It took time for Chapuras to start over as a rank one wisp and regain his personality and soul. But his hard work has paid off, he has recently become a light attribute ghost and financial advisor to Vandalyu. In other words, my position as Vandalyu Sama's close aide is immovable. I no longer need to concern myself with complicated struggles for success, he tells himself in delight. To those deemed to be on Vandalia's side, Chapuras is as helpful as he acted when he infiltrated a commerce guild before he died, but to enemies, he is even more ferocious and brutal than he was when alive. His rank increased during the battle against Hajime Fitton and his followers, thus improving his strength in combat, but the uniqueness in light attribute ghosts like him is that they are unaffected by the light attribute despite being undead. It is a great advantage to be immune to an attribute that is generally considered to be effective against undead. Name, Chipuras. Rank, 7. Race, Evil Flash Ghost. Level, 0. Title, The Eclipse Emperor's Fine Dog. Passive Skills. Spirit Form, Level 6, Level Up. Mental Corruption, Level 5. Light Attribute Immunity Light Form Manipulation, Level 6, Level Up Mana Enlargement, Level 2, Level Up Super Self-Strengthening, Subordination, Level 1, Awakened from Self-Strengthening, Subordination Strengthened Attribute Values, Guidance, Level 4, Level Up Strengthened Attribute Values, Demon King's Light, Level 4, Level Up Materialization, Level 3 Enhanced Attribute Values, Creator, Level 5 Active Skills No Attribute Magic, Level 4, Level Up Water Attribute Magic, Level 10 Mana Control, Level 10 Unarmed Fighting Technique, Level 7 High Speed Flight, Level 7, Level Up Surpass Limits, Level 10 Projectile Fire, Level 5, Level Up Light Attribute Magic, Level 2, Level Up Long Distance Control, Level 5, Level Up Unique Skills Vandal Use Divine Protection Dar Oak, Evil Flash Ghost Years Old, Male At first glance, Dar Oak appears to be a good-looking man with a well-featured face and a sturdy body. But before his death, he was one of the five dogs, the close aides of the purebreed vampire Ternicia, and possessed the title of Ternicia's fighting dog. As his name suggested, he was the most proficient in combat among Ternicia's servants, even surpassing the hound Isla in strength. He favors direct battle over trickery, and his words and the way he acts gives off the air of pride, similar to that of a knight. But in reality, he has no notion of chivalry, does not mind resorting to surprise or sneak attacks, and is a beast-like person who believes that the one left surviving in the end is the victor. Despite having lost almost all of his memories from before his death, that personality hasn't changed. However, he does not leave Vandalia's side unless ordered to, and doesn't cause any problems. 
he was a master swordsman in life. Even though he is now a ghost, he prefers fighting with light attribute magic and with a sword that he creates with his own spirit form. As he does, he says things like by the power of light and by my radiance, making him sound like a champion of justice. But the truth is that he simply takes pride in the power of his light attribute, and any foes who misunderstand may find themselves tricked by an illusion and cut down from behind. Name, Dar Oak. Rank, 7. Race, Evil Flash Ghost. Level, 0. Title, The Eclipse Emperor's Fighting Dog, Transformed from Fighting Dog. Passive Skills. Spirit Form, Level 6, Level Up. Mental Corruption, Level 8. Light Attribute Immunity. Light Form Manipulation, Level 5, Level Up. Mana Enlargement, Level 1. Self-Strengthening, Subordination, Level 10. Strengthened Attribute Values, Guidance, Level 4. Strengthened Attribute Values, Demon King's Light, Level 4, Level Up. Materialization, Level 4, Level Up. Enhanced Attribute Values, Creator, Level 6, Level Up. Active Skills. Combat Slaughter Swordsmanship, Level 2, Level Up. Unarmed Fighting Technique, Level 10. Archery, Level 4, Level Up. Transcend Limits, Level 2, Level Up. Fire Attribute Magic, Level 7. No Attribute Magic, Level 2, Level Up. Mana Control, Level 5. Projectile Fire, Level 6, Level Up. Light Attribute Magic, Level 3. Unique Skills. Dandel Use Divine Protection. Burkert, Evil Flash Ghost? Years old, male. Burkert has a handsome face with a thin, sickly-looking body. In life, he was a high-ranking noble-born vampire known as Ternicia's Mad Dog, one of Ternicia's five dogs. He was almost completely insane, he was not capable of reasonable action without instructions from Ternicia or one of the other five dogs. Thus, although he was one of Ternicia's close aides, she intended to use him as a disposable pawn when the time called for it. By becoming undead, he has lost both his memories and personality, become even more insane and is incapable even of holding a conversation. However, most spirits of people who died a long time ago are in a similar state, so Vandalyu and the other ghosts don't see this as much of a problem. Having lost his memories from when he was alive, Burkard thinks of himself as light. Thus, he uses methods of attack that are strange even for a ghost, such as shouting, me light beam, and turning himself into a beam of light to strike the enemy with his own body. It seems that his insanity makes him proficient at changing the shape of his spirit form exactly as he wishes. He appears to have an interest in the magical girl concerts. It seems that they are fun for him because of the flashing lights. He feels perhaps uneasy in places that are completely dark, his insanity seems to turn inwards and whispers to himself in a voice that can only be heard by Vandalyu and other spirits. Name, Burkert. Rank, 7. Race, Evil Flash Ghost. Level, 0. Title, The Eclipse Emperor's Mad Dog, Transformed from Mad Dog. Passive Skills Spirit Form, Level 7, Level Up Mental Corruption, Level 10 Light Attribute Immunity Light Form Manipulation, Level 8, Level Up Mana Enlargement, Level 2 Murder Healing, Level 10 Self-Strengthening, Subordination, Level 10 Strengthened Attribute Values, Guidance, Level 5, Level Up. Strengthened Attribute Values, Demon King's Light, Level 4, Level Up. Materialization, Level 1. Enhanced Attribute Values, Creator, Level 5. Intuition, Level 1, New. Active Skills. High Speed Flight, Level 8, Level Up. Projectile Fire, Level 7, Level Up. Transcend Limits, Level 1, Awakened from Surpass Limits. 
Light Attribute Magic, Level 1. Mana Control, Level 1. Long Distance Control, Level 8, Level Up. Dancing, Level 1, New. Singing, Level 1, New. Unique Skills. Vandal Use Divine Protection. Kest, Wolf Type Beast Kin, 15 years old, male. A beast kin boy with the ears and tail of a wolf. He works as a city guard in Morksy. He has a bright, serious, and kind personality, but he is not very good at dealing with hierarchical relationships. He overlooked the corrupt deeds and the taking of bribes by some of the senior guards, including Agar. Of course, this wasn't a problem for just Kest. Up until just a few years ago, there was systematic discrimination against Beastkin in the Alcrum Duchy, and they were not able to become civil servants such as city guards or government officials. But the Duke, who learned of the deeds of the Five Colored Blades and the peaceful faction of Alda that were led by Hines. Following this, he foresaw that these groups would become prominent forces in the Orbom Kingdom and made the decision to do away with this discriminatory system. Thanks to that, Kest was fortunately able to be employed as a city guard, and he is now able to support his mother and his young siblings on his own. Thus, he is a believer of Vida, but he holds feelings of respect for the five colored blades. However, he also has friendly feelings towards Vandalyu, and does things like regularly visit his stall to check up on him. Vandalyu is of similar age to Kest's siblings, and Agar was behaving dangerously towards him, and with people like the Starving Wolf and the Deputy Guild Master of the Commerce Guild who had nothing but bad rumors about him, Kest was worried about all of the trouble that seemed to surround Vandalyu, but Vandalyu ended up succeeding before Kest's very eyes. But rather than becoming suspicious of Vandalyu, Kest thinks of him as being like someone from a legend. These feelings only became stronger once he learned that Vandalyu was acting behind the scenes during the battle to stop the monster rampage caused by Hajime Fitton. The five colored blades are like heroes of a distant world to Kest, while Vandalyu is a superhero that he can meet anytime. Kest hasn't received Vandalyu's divine protection, but he is under the influence of his guidance. He is a beast kin and has always been physically more capable than those who had become city guards at the same time as him but he is now noticeably ahead of the rest. However, since almost every city guard, knight, mercenary and adventurer gained many levels and changed jobs as a result of the battle at the front gate, he doesn't stand out much. Incidentally, signing up as a city guard offers a more stable lifestyle than registering as an adventurer at the Adventurer's Guild. New city guards aren't paid much, but all equipment is paid for and the costs of maintaining them are written off as work expenses. They perform many different tasks, such as training, patrolling the city, guarding the gate and conducting crime investigations, and this is more dangerous than ordinary jobs. But it is an exaggeration to say that they are risking their lives every day, especially in Morksy, a relatively safe city. In comparison, adventurers must purchase their own arms and equipment and pay for their maintenance and repairs on their own as well. Their income is not stable. Things change once one becomes D-class, but those in E-class and F-class before that would have to worry about the possibility of not being able to support a large family like Kest's, even in slums where goods are cheap. And, of course, adventurers are more likely to lose their lives than city guards. Of course, a large number of high-rank monsters were defeated in the battle at the front gate, and even Kest received a sum of money that is equivalent to over a hundred years' worth of his current salary. He is unlikely to go hungry if he maintains a modest lifestyle. Rock, human, 25 years old, male. The leader of the Iron Boulder Brigade, a D-class adventurer party based in the Adventurer's Guild in the city of Morksy. He is a young man of average height, but has a tough-looking face that resembles a boulder that has been weathered away by the wind as well as a body with steel-like muscles. But unlike what his appearance might suggest, he is a studious person and possesses an especially deep knowledge regarding monsters. As an adventurer, he has an average amount of talent and is the hard-working type. 
he has a helpful personality and pays new adventurers a lot of attention despite his work not requiring him to, doing things like giving advice to them, accompanying them on their training and teaching them which monsters they need to watch out for on their first hunts in devil's nests. He is a passionate person, when he encountered Vandalu by chance out in the field, he mistook him for a rookie adventurer who had been killed by a dangerous demon dog or black dog, fawing, and tried to avenge him. And it is not only Rock, but all members of the Iron Boulder Brigade, who possess these qualities. This makes them very popular among younger adventurers and they have the trust of the guild's employees. Guild Master Burrard is thinking of recruiting all of them as instructors at the school for adventurers once they retire. However, their actual ability is average and they encountered barriers to their growth. When drinking, they tell each other and their friends that they want to rise to C-class before they retire. But since they were also fighting at the front gate to protect the city from the monster rampage caused by Hajime Fitton, all of them overcame their development barriers at once, and their rise to C-class feels within reach. Incidentally, all of the men of the Iron Boulder Brigade, including Rock, often prayed to gods of Alda's faction, but they have converted to Vita's religion now. Holly, damper, human? Years old, female. The director of the orphanage in the slum quarters. She has the appearance of someone in her sixties. She is a one-eyed old lady without a hunched back who walks upright without using a walking stick, or at least, that was what those around her and she herself believed. The reality is that she was a damper who was brainwashed by Burkine and regularly injected painful chemicals into the skin of her face to create wrinkles and disguise herself as an old lady. She is the third damper in the Orbom kingdom. Of course, in terms of order of birth, she would be the first, and Vandalu would be second. Selin would be the third. Incidentally, although her exact age is unknown, it seems that she is younger than Ceres and Vestra, whom she has treated as her daughters all this time. Holly has been brainwashed for so long that she is unable to remember her original face. However, it would be unwise to suddenly undergo a reversal of age, so she is continuing to use the wrinkle-inducing chemicals. Backham, human, 35 years old, male. The guild master of the Morksy branch of the Tamer's Guild. His familiar is a rank 6 huge wyvern, and he is known by his title of Flying Dragon User. He is a wyvern tamer who is trusted even by Duke Alcrum and of such skill that he is even requested to work as an instructor for the dragon knights who serve the duke's house. Ordinarily, he might have been given a court rank by the duke and taken up a position as an instructor in the dragon knight order, but the life of a tamer suits him better, and he works as a guild master because he wants to train a successor. Incidentally, he is married and has children. One winter, a damper boy registered at his guild with a stray dog that he had tamed. Backham thought that he had future promise only for that damper to turn that stray dog into a monster, then gain three rat monsters, then increase their ranks one after another. After making several reports of the discovery of new monster races, the damper then proceeded to bring two ghouls into the city. Future promise? No, he is exceptional in the present tense. No, hasn't he already surpassed me? He has indeed, he thinks to himself. In addition to Vandalio, the children of the orphanage have registered with rank 1 familiars of their own, significantly decreasing the average age of the members of the Tamer's Guild branch in this city. Incidentally, it is rare for the familiars of ordinary Tamers to increase their ranks multiple times in a short period of time. Perhaps not so much for rank 1 monsters, but rank 3 and 4 monsters do not increase their ranks so easily. This is not because familiars are different from wild monsters, but simply because tamers, like adventurers, often aim to hunt weaker enemies that they can defeat with certainty rather than risk their lives hunting enemies that are of equal or greater strength. This is also partially because the higher a monster's rank, the harder it is for its level to increase, and there are less monsters of equal strength for it to defeat, so leveling up takes longer. Burrard, human, 45 years old, male. The guild master of the Morksy branch of the Adventurer's Guild. He was a free, unfettered adventurer in the past, 
but he retired from active work and began work as a guild employee. He succeeded in this career and rose to becoming the head of a branch. He is married and has one daughter. As the head of the Adventurers Guild in a city of commerce, he dealt with a considerable number of problems that occurred fairly frequently while worrying about his daughter's future, but the scale of these problems grew immensely following Vandalieu's arrival in the city. In addition to Vandalieu not having any interest in registering as an adventurer, there is also the matter of Juliana Alcrum, and all of this has caused accumulating damage to his scalp and stomach. Vandalieu, who has restructured the food carts in the slums that would purchase the monster parts that were used as proof of extermination, and has also drawn attention as a tamer with greater fighting strength than a party of adventurers, has been a source of headaches for Backham. But Vandalieu is also a welcome figure, as goblin extermination is very active now thanks to him. Backham is still unaware of the events that occurred at the Adventurers Guild of the City of Niarchy in the Hartner Duchy. Regarding the fact that his daughter Jessie is spending time with Simon, he does not feel anger towards Simon for approaching his daughter. Instead, he is in anticipation that love has perhaps finally come to his daughter, who has lived a frivolous life up until now. Even without his bias as her father, Burrard believes that Jessie is a beautiful woman, but was on the verge of missing her opportunity to get married because she was completely absorbed in alchemy, for which she had a halfway decent talent. The development with Simon was very timely, as he was considering forcibly dragging her to marriage interviews. Of course, he would have been against Simon being in her company if he remained a one-armed dropout living in the slums. But there is no reason for him to oppose it now, the current Simon has acquired an artificial arm, become even more powerful than before he lost his original arm, and is even a hero who gained a title due to his actions during the battle at the front gate. He watches the pair and hopes for their relationship to develop into one of love. Isaac Morksy, human, 40 years old, male. An earl who serves the Alcrum House of Dukes. He is a nobleman with rather thin hair but a plentiful beard. The spies in his employment are considerably proficient, but he is otherwise an ordinary nobleman. He has no ambition to become more than he currently is, nor does he have any burning ambitions, he does not plot any unnecessary conspiracies. He is not entirely pure and upright, but he is not crafty and scheming, either. He is the kind of person who would raise his sword, which does not offer him anything other than a little peace of mind, even in a battle where his own death would be certain, in order to protect family and his pride and duty as a nobleman. The headquarters of a rather large-scale criminal organization existed in his city, but that was a problem that was too great for him and his advisors to overcome. As a noble, he belongs to a faction that has sworn loyalty to their master, the current Duke Alcrum. His city is a city of commerce, so he rules it with care to ensure that there are no religious conflicts. On the other hand, he controls little military force, but there are other nobles' domains between the domain ruled by the Morksy House and the borders of other duchies, so this causes no particular inconvenience. There are devil's nests in the lands surrounding Morksy, the capital of his domain, as well as several D-class dungeons and one C-class dungeon. However, the adventurers of the Adventurers Guild regularly cull the monsters and the city profits from the products acquired from them. His only source of major headaches was his uncle Joseph, who used his connections to gain the position of deputy guild master at the Commerce Guild. The above is a description of the situation before Vandalieu's arrival. After Vandalieu came to the city, the safety of the slums improved, the poor gained jobs and an income, and a famous product known as Gobu Gobu was developed. However, he is now troubled by problems such as the half-minotaur with the same name as Juliana, a member of the Alcrum family of dukes, and the fact that the religion of Vida has grown rapidly in popularity among the citizens. On top of that, although he does not know everything about the true identity of the bandits behind the monster rampage, he has a partial understanding regarding them. He understands that Vandalieu and Darcia are unmistakably the ones who saved the city from destruction and feels gratitude towards them. He weighed the risks of turning him into an enemy and the risks of forming a bond of friendship with him and elected for the latter. 
it is unclear whether this decision will lead to the destruction of the Morksy House or will later be praised by his descendants as a historically wise decision. However, it seems that his hairline is on its way to its gradual demise. Tackard Alcrum, human, 60 years old, male. The current head of the Alcrum House of Dukes. At first glance, he appears to be a gentle old nobleman, but has a significant shady side to him as well. He commands the Dragon Knight Order that uses lesser wyverns as mounts and is fairly capable in managing domestic affairs, having succeeded in making the duchy quite wealthy. He does not have a particularly cool-headed personality, but his relationship with his youngest sister Juliana was merely one that he was obliged to have due to their connection by blood, he was not close to her at all. As she had given up her right to succeed his position as head of the house, she would never have become a reason for internal conflict from a legal standpoint. However, he is well aware that the law is something that changes based on public opinion and the needs of those in power, and even if it does not, there is always some hidden flaw or loophole. Thus, Tackard intended to have Juliana married to a suitable partner of his choosing and retire before her deeds as a knight became too magnificent and attention-drawing. When he heard the report that she was abducted by minotaurs, he requested Randolph the True to put her to rest if she was still alive. However, upon investigating the damper that had appeared within his realm, he was horrified to learn that a female adventurer and a girl named Julia, who were kidnapped by minotaurs and had their limbs severed, were in his care. There was no doubt that the girl named Julia was actually Juliana. Upon learning that the damper later acquired a familiar named Juliana who resembled Juliana exactly, of a new, minotaur-like race of monster, Tackard almost fainted in shock. He doesn't understand the situation. He doesn't know what is truth and what is lies, especially regarding the minotaur-like monster. Without making any hasty moves, he has sent spies to infiltrate the city and gather information. Rodriguez, human, 37 years old, male. A B-class adventurer known by the title of Strong Sword. He has stepped back from active work and now works as a personal bodyguard for Edmund, a merchant who saved his sickly son from the brink of death. He has a fierce-looking appearance, but he is not a bad man, he has a very duty-driven personality. However, he will even disobey the orders of Edmund, the one who saved his son's life, if it is for Edmund's own sake. He was able to realize that Darcia was more powerful than himself just from her ordinary, everyday actions, but, he hadn't realized just how much more powerful she was, so he was absolutely astounded by what he saw during the battle at the front gate. Edmund, human, 32 years old, male. Edmund appears to be an honest man at first glance, but he is actually a malicious, immoral merchant who comes up with all kinds of schemes. He is immoral, but there are lines that he will not cross, and he does not have such greed that he is willing to take important things from others for his own profit. He doesn't believe that money is everything in this world, and he knows that there are people like Rodriguez who won't risk his life for money but is willing to throw his own life away to repay a debt. However, when he approached Darcia with the suggestion to run a ghoul brothel disguised as a church of Vida, he was spellbound by his own idea and found himself on the verge of walking down a dangerous path. Looking at it another way, he valued Zadiris and Bastia's beauty as women very highly. He trusted Rodriguez and abandoned this scheme, and as he was trying to come up with other get-rich-quick schemes while conducting his business, the Hajime Fitton incident occurred. In the aftermath, he succeeded in acquiring a presence in the city and gaining the trust of the people, which the other traveling merchants lost by fleeing the city. He is now trying to become closer to Vandalu and Darcia to earn even more profits. Incidentally, there is no dark twist to the story of when he saved the life of Rodriguez's son, such as that Edmund himself was secretly poisoning the boy. He was simply aware of the strong sword Rodriguez's personality and was certain that Rodriguez would feel an obligation to serve him if he were to offer life-saving medicine for his child for free. Joseph, human, 65 years old, male. Formerly one of the deputy guild masters at the Commerce Guild. Although he has given up his rights to succession, he is the younger brother of the previous Earl Morksy and uncle to the current one. 
having a greedy and terrible personality, he committed almost every crime he possibly could without losing his position as deputy guild master. There were only bad rumors about him, he would interfere with the businesses of guild members he disliked, repeatedly harass his subordinates and bribe thugs in the red light district or slums as well as city guards to make them his pawns. He attempted to take advantage of a damper who appeared in the city, and as a result of harassing him just as he had done to every other person who had rejected him, he ended up causing his own downfall. Vandalu being too different from all of Joseph's other victims was one reason for this, and the other was that Agar, whom Joseph had thought of as his pawn, was involved in far worse crimes than Joseph had imagined. His assets have been confiscated and he has been exiled from the city and the guild, his whereabouts are currently unknown. He has not been erased by one of Vandalu's subordinates. Vandalu left him be, as it would be too much of a bother. Agar, human, 31 years old, male. A corrupt city guard in Morksy. He was a minor villain who flattered the powerful, crushed the weak and took pleasure in discriminating against minorities. He bullied Kest, a younger city guard who managed to join the city guards despite being a beast kin as much as he could without causing problems. He also overlooked small crimes occurring around the city in exchange for bribes. Unless new city guards were appointed in senior roles or of an equal rank as Agar, or the upper brass cracked down on corruption among the city guards, Agar would likely have continued causing small amounts of harm to the city. However, he fell for Darcia when she visited the city, and as a result of being consumed by the desire to make her his, he crossed a line he shouldn't have when he plotted to kidnap orphans from the orphanage with some of his colleagues. His colleagues were killed as a result, and Agar himself went insane from fear inside Guffedgarn's labyrinth. The Earl's spies were shadowing him when he headed for the orphanage to kidnap the children, so he was already doomed at that point. Gordon, human, 25 years old, male. A C-class adventurer who possessed the title of Strong Arm. His behavior was extremely terrible, and he came to the city of Morksy because it was becoming difficult to stay in the city where he was originally based. He spotted Zadiris and Badia, Vandalu's familiars whom he had left waiting outside while he entered the Adventurer's Guild. Thinking of them as a lucky find, he ended up in an argument with Jesse when he tried to make them his. Looking at it another way, he valued Zadiris and Bastia's attractive qualities very highly. He created a fuss and challenged those around to a duel, and as a result, he was beaten by Miles who isn't even an adventurer, and was thrashed one-sidedly by Natania and Simon, D-class adventurers who had lost limbs and replaced them with artificial ones. After this shameful display, he lost his strong arm title. He managed to escape the city of Morksy, but he was rendered disabled by Hajime Fitton. He then had his body taken over to be used as a vessel by the heroic spirit known as the mountain-breaking strong spear Bobby. He tried to acquire Zadiris and Badia, but as he was easily repelled, he wasn't particularly hated by Vandalio, his companions, or even by Zadiris and Badia themselves. To be more precise, he hadn't left enough of an impression on them to be hated. Incidentally, defeating hastily created heroic spirit vessels such as Gordon yields less experience points than defeating enemies who are able to summon heroic spirits upon themselves on their own. This is because the hastily created vessels are not suitable bodies for the heroic spirits, they are makeshift vessels that are only able to exert their full power for a limited period of time. Fitton, the God of Thunderclouds a being who ascended to godhood after the battle between Alda and Vida, approximately 50,000 years ago. In life, he was a mercenary who accomplished legendary feats and excelled in all kinds of physical combat. Upon becoming a god of the wind attribute, he behaved like a god to be in line with the others. However, due to the appearance of Vandalu who is able to kill, destroy, gods, his original personality reawakened and he devised a plan to create a battle to the death against Vandalu. As the title of God of Thunderclouds may suggest, he is one of the gods who controls the weather, and because he was a mercenary as a mortal, he is also a god of battle. 
he possessed the greatest fighting strength among the subordinate gods serving the heroic god Nine Road, who succeeded the great god of the wind attribute, the god of wind and art Shazarian. The mercenaries who were a part of Fitton's mercenary band when he was alive served him as heroic spirits, and they were greater in number than most subordinate gods' heroic spirits. However, the doctrine that Fitton taught to his followers after he became a god was something that he had done to be in line with the gods of all those forces. To him, it was nothing but a flimsy farce, and that is why he sent almost no familiar spirits or heroic spirits for his followers after his own generation ended. His original personality was that of a battle-frenzied thrill junkie who lives in the moment, uninterested in good and evil. And although he was not aware of it, he was also a destructionist. It just so happened that he continued to be hired by the same country over the years and didn't cause any messes between the end of the war and his own death, which is why he was widely supported as a hero. However, in ordinary circumstances, he was someone who never should have become a god. He thought of his believers as livestock and considered them to be animals rather than people. He did grant divine protections to his believers and put them through trials, but the main objective of this is to kill time, he did not feel the responsibility that a god should have to guide their people. He can be considered to have been a far more evil god in nature than the gods who left the demon king's army to join Vida's faction, such as Fyderg, the dragon god of five sins, and Mubujenj, the evil god of degenerate corpulence. Fitton took notice of Hajime due to their compatibility in terms of attributes and abilities, nurtured him to make use of him, then led his heroic spirits in battle against Vandalyu. However, Hajime took back control over his body in the end, causing Fitton to meet a pathetic demise. In terms of his position as a god, he was a subordinate god of Nine Road who serves Alda, and had a considerable number of believers not only in the Amid Empire but also in the Orbom Kingdom. There are also churches dedicated to him outside the Bongaya continent. Thus, his destruction was a significant global event. Incidentally, a space attribute mage who was one of Fitton's heroic spirits, the one responsible for connecting the entrance of his dungeon of trials to a forested devil's nest near the city of Morxi, still remains in Fitton's divine realm. Hajime Inui, human, two years old, seventeen years old in appearance, male. The reincarnated individual who was granted the marionette ability by Rod Court. He was originally introverted and had the kind of personality that preferred making moves behind the scenes rather than arming himself and fighting. In origin, he was consumed by his cheat like ability, his talent for magic, and the upbringing that was wealthier than the one he had on Earth. He misused his powers, but after Amamiya Hirodo formed the Bravers, Hajime Fitton felt discontent as he could no longer do as he liked. He accepted the Avalon Rakudu Hajiri, betrayed the Bravers with Murakami and the others and joined forces with the Eighth Guidance, and as a result, he was brought to the verge of death by an explosion caused by Isis and then finished off by Kanako. The trauma of these events remained etched deeply in his mind even after his reincarnation in Lambda to the point that Fitton, a god of war, trembled at the mere sight of Isis and Kanako. Defeated in battle, he begged for his life to be spared. But Vandalyu knew that Hajime was conscious for the duration that Fitton controlled his body and could have stopped Fitton if he had resisted strongly. Thus, Vandalyu devoured his soul along with Fitton's, ending his existence. Junpei Murakami, human, 2 years old, 17 years old in appearance, male. The person who was Vandalyu, Kanako and a Seiji's homeroom teacher on Earth. He was a reincarnated individual with the Kronos ability. He made a deal with Rodcourt, promising to kill Vandalyu in exchange for the same reward that was offered to Keitu Kanata, the reward of being reincarnated under favorable circumstances in a world similar to Earth. But as soon as he was reincarnated in Lambda, Kanako, Doug and Melissa left him, and the super-sense Keirugatuda fled. With the two other remaining members, the Sylphid Misa Anderson and Odin Akira Hazamata, he tried to kill Vandalyu while taking advantage of Hajime Fitton, but this failed miserably. Although he considered Hajime to be nothing but a disposable pawn in origin, it was he and his companions who ended up being under Hajime's control, and he was later killed by Vandalia's right fist that was under Doug's control. 
His soul was devoured and his existence extinguished. As he was passionate about killing Vandalio, Rodcourt had high expectations of him and gave him many blessings, but this resulted in Rodcourt himself being damaged when his soul was devoured. Incidentally, he called Kanako a traitor and loose, but they did not have any particularly deep relationship. They had a certain amount of trust in each other in origin, but it was a rather distant one with work being their main goal in common. Randolph, Elf? Years old, male. The S-class adventurer of the Orbom kingdom who possesses the title of the true. He turned his back on the gods and decided to retire, fatigued by life, but he was unable to do that because he is such a capable individual. Currently, in addition to hunting monsters to feed himself, he is accepting requests from those belonging to families to whom he was indebted in the past. He is a master of spiritual magic and uses a dagger as well as a bow and arrows as his weapons. He is also capable of sealing fragments of the demon king on his own. He originally had an honest, virtuous personality, but his despair has caused him to become a reckless person who does not think about consequences. There is also no consistency to his actions. Although he agreed to Duke Alcrum's request to dispose of Juliana, he thought it would be fine to spare her subordinates if they still lived. But at the last minute, he took pity on Juliana and Natania and let them live. However, if by some event Duke Alcrum or even the Orbom Kingdom were to put a bounty on his head and send elite forces to kill him, he is confident that he will be able to come out alive. His wish for such destructive events is clear, as he would truly become free if they came to pass. In his everyday life, he disguises himself as a middle-aged human man with a variety of false names such as Ralph. Amamiya Hiroshi, human, six years old, male. The oldest child of the braver Amamiya Hirodo and the angel Amamiya Narumi. His name originates from Amamiya Hirodo. Translators note, Hiroshi slash is the first kanji of Hiroto slash Vandalia's original given name. He is a mischievous boy who has inherited from his parents a talent for magic and physical activities, but he does not possess a cheat-like ability. He has always been bothered by this, and it has caused a complex. He knew about Banda, the mysterious shadow that frequently appeared in his younger sister May's drawings, but his parents told him that it's a friend that only May could see, and he believed this as well. But after the kidnapping incident, Banda appeared to Hiroshi in a dream, and Hiroshi is now learning no attribute magic from Banda. He was fed a mysterious organ, something that was Murakami's and also a part of Vandalia's soul. He has thus gained the super mana recovery cheat-like ability, though he does not know this yet. Rankings I-Cup Belmond Eisen Quinn Princess Livia H-Cup Darcia Teria Badia Valkyrie, Legion Gina Cornelia Gizania G Cup Isla Isis, Legion Iris Rapy Cage F Cup Eleonora Seria Magisa, New Jail Rita E Cup Perivale Muse Saris, New Ereshkigal, Legion Orbia D Cup Kachia Bilda Izanami, Legion C Cup Kanako Tsuchiya Melissa J. Satong Privil Natania, New Minuma Hitomi, Legion B Cup Vestra, New Aniwaka Zandia Zadiris Pluto, Legion A Cup Baba Yaga, Legion Guffetgarn, Vessel A A Cup Palvina Shade, Legion Triple A Cup Juliana, New
As only two months have passed since the previous volume, there are no changes in position between already listed individuals. However, new individuals, such as Juliana, post-reincarnation, Natania, Saris, and Vestra, have been added to the ranking. Jesse and Holly are not in the ranking as Jesse is unaware that it exists, and Holly declined to be a part of it. The Development of Talashim Total population including the demon continent, approximately 73,000, approximately 23,000 in Talashim, 50,000 on the demon continent. Ghouls, undead, black goblins, anubises, orcuses, titans, humans, beastkin, dwarves, scylla, half-elves, elves, lizardmen, armands, vampires, skogstra, leshi, gehenna bees, kiriugen, mariugen, lamia, draconids, kijin, harpies, centaurs, merfolk, chaos elves, noble orcs, orcs, high cobalts, cobalts, high goblins, goblins, majin, arachne, empusa, dark humans, dark beastkin, dverger, Half Minotaurs. Golems and cursed weapons are not included in the population. The migration of the Dark Elves in the western region of the continent has not yet begun. Facilities in Talashim. Mercury Mirror Golems. Explorers Guild, Trading Post, Distribution Center, Job Changing Room. Church of Vida, with statues of Vida's subordinate gods, the gods of her faction, Zuraworn, Ricklent, Xantark, and Farmoun. Public bathhouses. Carts of all kinds. Publicly managed casino. Immortal Ant Forest, has had Ganty Ants planted, Skogstra and Leshy proliferating. Golem factories of all kinds. Monster plant fields. Training dummy grounds, inhabited by undead heroes from Alda's faction. Theater. Artistic paintings that remain in the minds of those who view them, entire paintings cannot be viewed except from the sky. The Root of Life. Group housing facilities for immigration applicants. Dormitory for immigrants from human societies. Talashim Castle. Gehenabi Castle. Enormous statue of Vandalio, under construction, new. B-Class Dungeon X2, plus 1, C-Class Dungeon X2, D-Class Dungeon X3, E-Class Dungeon X1. Dungeon for Cultivating Pine Trees, for Wine X1. Amusement Beach Dungeon. Dungeon for Fishing Industry. Dungeon to temporarily house Demon Army, attached to Vandalio's underground workshop. Marshlands, Lizard Men District. Capricorn Farm. Capricorn Milking Factory. Explorers Guild Branch. Small Shrine to Fiderg, the Dragon God of Five Sins. Mental Encroachment Stone Circle. D Class Dungeon X1, B Class Dungeon X1. Marshlands, Scylla District. Paddy Fields, Demon Ducks being used for farming. Mud Bath Hot Springs Small Shrine to Maribevel, the heroic goddess of the Scylla Explorers Guild Branch Huge Capybara Farm Duck Farm Mental Encroachment Stone Circle Small Dungeon for Teleportation Sauron Liberation Front Base, former Scylla Territory Mental Encroachment Stone Circle Automatic Undead Creating Magic Circle, used to recycle members of Duke Marm's army. D-Class Dungeon. Small Dungeon for Teleportation. Main Station of the Dark Knight Knight's Order. Crude Quality Undead Army. Demon Continent. Xantark's Temporary Divine Realm. City. Hot Springs. Enormous statue of Vandalio, under construction, new. Dungeons, X countless number. Temporary facilities. Nochin Concert Arena. Sam's Job Changing Room. Nations within the Boundary Mountain Range under the influence of the Dark Dream Demon Creation Path, nations personally visited by Vandalio. Noble Orc Kingdom, population, approximately 100,000. Zanal Padna, population, approximately 100,000. Ghoul Nation, population, approximately 5,000. 
High Cobalt Nation, population, approximately 16,000. High Goblin Nation, population, approximately 10,000. Majin Nation, population, approximately 100,000, of which approximately 1,000 are Majin. Kijin Nation, population, approximately 10,000. Draconid Nation, population, approximately 5,000. Centaur Nation, population, approximately 15,000. Harpy Nation, population, approximately 27,000. Lamia Nation, population, approximately 20,000. Dark Elf Nation, population, approximately 10,000. Vida's Resting Grounds. Merfolk Nation, population, approximately 40,000.